broadcast live. Uh, what's up, fellas? Uh, thank you for your time. Welcome to Stick On Live. Uh, the, the, the three of you have a joint uh, it's called Wrote the Book. We just saw you guys perform it there. Can you tell us about it? We'll start with you, Tito. I gotta go first. All right. <laughs> um, Ken hit me up uh, and you said you got a record. I was, I, was, I was in Cape Town with my son. I was on some daddy time type of shit, you know? And I was like, all right, cool. When I, when I, get, when I go back to Joburg, we can get the record done. Um, the song was supposed to be something else. He sent me some funk, West Coast, like, fly shit, you know? And then we were going to do that. And then when I got to the studio, what's dope about how we made that record, actually, we were yeah. all in studio for the record. Yeah. When we got in the studio, niggas were like, nah, we were supposed to do that song, but we're going to do something else now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah niggas told me we're going to do something else. I picked a beat. And then um, we actually like sat down and had a conversation for like four hours, maybe before we did the record. And right now, I feel with the music that you're hearing right now, it's super microwave because niggas are not getting in the studio together to actually make the record. That's why you don't feel the synergy. You know what I'm saying? So when we actually get together, we were able to like, oh, let's come up with a dope hook. Oh, let's do 30 bars. Oh, let's whatever. We were able to do a great record because everybody was in there to assist and make a dope record. So I feel that's what's missing in, in right now in, in music because it wasn't just sends verses. So shout out to Clan for having the vision to put it together and shout out to everyone that how we were able to fuse the generations, different generations together to make something so beautiful, man. Uh, uh, it's important for, I would like to say to, where's the camera? I would like to say to, to the youngins, try as much as you can to come together for songs and, and try to record them together. That thing has, has more impact than when you send a song. I know sometimes niggas can catch your energy and really do what you, you, what you have started, but when you're in studio together, it's a very different story. For example, Flight Squad. This man pulled the most American shit I've ever seen. So Americans, so in, in, in America, there's studio, there's studios everywhere, right? So there's like five rooms of studios. And, and, and niggas will be in that office park. So what they do is they get in there and they get in studio one. And in studio one, you might find two chains. You're like, what's up, nigga? Yeah. And maybe two chains ain't feeling you. So you're like, ah. Yeah. You go to the next studio and you find another artist. But he's feeling you like, yeah, let me drop a verse. And now you're on the song, right? Yeah. So this man, he heard Fly Squad. With young bull, with with young bull, uh, Slim Dumpy. That's my motherfucking shit, by the way. That's my motherfucking weapon. I'm killing y'all with that nigga. He's pulling up, um, and he said, and he said, y y yo, let me let me jump on this shit real quick. And I swear to God, he already has something. But it shows you that they from a school where they understand how serious this is and how on time they gotta be at all times. So he came on a song, he jumped on it, and da -da -da. what I'm saying is the studio synergy is very important. I would like to encourage new artists to do that more. Uh, my question for you, Reese, is you are the you're listed as the executive producer of, of the record. Uh, can you tell us in layman terms, what does that mean? What did you do? Like exactly what was your role in this project? Yeah, so I'm going to be honest with you, bro. I didn't even know what executive producing was when I suggested to executive producers uh, uh, album. <laughs> but, but, but basically what I, what I mostly did was help him curate the records, like, you know, like advise him on the people he could put on for specific songs. Like, you know, yo, this cat would go well with this guy, you know, and with this guy on the hook type shit. Sometimes it'd be a situation where it's like I'd pick a beat and I'd be like, yo, I think this beat would work for a song with this concept. And maybe if you have this guy do it, it'll come into fruition, you know, stuff like that. So and also arranging the track list, which is very important, you know, so. Yo, I'm about to say to the game right now, if you got yourself like a project and you want to sequence it correctly, holla at Reese, it's a real thing. Songwriting is a real thing. Can we please introduce songwriting to the game? Let's start there. Let's drop the egos. It's fine. You can have people write songs with you. It's not for you. It's with you. And also, but this man, 
sequencing in a, a project. Like, yo, this comes first, this comes danger. For real, not for real. Not for real. So stuff like that. So, you know, that that's where I came in, you know? I mean, also you also you have to understand some records we, we had worked on prior to even speaking about making an album, you know? And it's just that the records are so good, you just have to put it on the album. It's just the people love it, so why not give it to them? Package it up, give it to them. So we decided to do that. Like, Rolling was already out prior to, you know, all of this happening and coming together. But it's on the, it's on the record, and it blends in perfectly, you know? So... So yeah, basically that's what I did on my end. But shout out to my brother Clen. Yo, shout out to you for real, bro. Like shout out to Clen for for being like, "Yo, Reese, I need you on board and I need you on on ultra focus mode, you know? This this is a mutual thing that we got going on here, you know what I mean? So, I'm just grateful to be in this position right now cuz I love music, bro. For for the for for the for for the OG, it's like for me it's it must be so beautiful for you to see PTA hip hop just going as far as it's going right now. Uh, but yeah, I would just like to get it from you. How, how, how does it feel to see all this shit going? And you know, most importantly, just also you being a part of it. Because you know, you see a lot of scenes, niggas help build shit, but they don't get to be like a part of it when it's like popping. So yeah, I would just like you to comment on that. Let's not cheat the system. Let's not cheat the system. Let's not cheat the system. Let's not be deluded. Let's not be delusional. Let's not be caught up by the whole regional shit that's happening. There are great musicians, great writers, great compilers of music, great great a and r's of music and i'm talking i'm not talking necessarily majors i'm i'm talking about people who deal with music outside of the hype so i just need us to have an appreciation of the art a bigger appreciation of the art and i enjoy projects like this one and not just this one there's been a couple of others that have been, that, that, that have come out but the biggest thing is to enjoy and appreciate the art above the hype it's not regional, it's not continental. It's literally if it's dope or it's not. And the biggest lesson I've learned this year and hanging around these guys is that you gotta believe in what you got, the product that you got. I speak to Clint on a regular basis. The way he wants to go about how he wants to be seen. And I think it's a, it's a big thing that we've been shy about as, as creatives. As certainly from the era I come from he wants to be seen and perceived a, a certain way through his music and it's and it's nice to hear you know it's refreshing to hear a young man thinking about his music in a way that it's a reflection of who he is you know people tell you to act the whole day but I'm surrounded by guys who literally I say can I just be myself and shout out to them and to answer your question it's a privilege and an honor for myself and I'm sure for Tito as well to be surrounded by guys who can carry the baton. You know, I don't want to I don't want to rain on their parade, but literally this is where we at. These guys, the odds are against them. The odds are against these guys. I swear, it might not look that way, but they don't complain about it. They push. So salute to them. Uh, Clan, everybody's been talking except you, but you the man of the hour. Uh I just like to, I'm always curious about projects like this. How do you go about putting everything together, bro? Like from collecting the beats, like do you have like a call out where you like niggas can send beats and then who do you put on, on which song? Like just basically take us through the process. Um, so I'll just be honest on how everything started like, right? So this thing started like this. We're, we're on a show, on our way to a show together. Me, it's Jay Jody, it's Reese, the whole family, Revenge Rock Records. And then Reese asked me, he's like, Yo, bro, who's your favorite like DJ? Like, yeah. what do you want to be? Like, what, what, what's your goal? What are you trying to achieve as a brother? And I'm like, Yo, Joe, I, I look up to DJ Carl. Yeah. And he's like, Okay, cool. Yeah. I heard your last album because this is my second album. He's like, Yo, I heard your last album. Let me produce your, your, your next album. Let me help you with that, bro. Yeah. 
And I said, damn, you serious? And he said, yeah. And I thought, oh, okay, this man maybe is just like late. You know, we're going to a show. We're having a nice time. We're nice. It's a Saturday. We're cool and all of that. Monday, we're chilling. Tuesday, he sends me a message. Yo, bro, I need you to handle the next album. I was serious. I want to produce the next album. I'm like, damn, bro, you serious for real? He's like, yeah, bro, that's what I'm trying to do. I want you to be, you said you like DJ Khaled. I want you to be the next DJ Khaled of SA. I'm like, okay, cool. Let's go about it. He's like, no, bro, I'm going to advise you on the songs. I'm going to advise you on how to produce music. I'm going to advise you how to make music. And I looked at this guy catalog. I'm like, come on, man. Yeah. I'd be a fool to not listen yeah. to this guy. Yeah. Come on, let's He's be real. Yeah. We know what he has done. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay, cool. And then I, I get the, the, the first session going on. You know what happened for me and this man to be in a session? He texts me the following Tuesday. He's like, yo, Clem, when are you getting the session going? I'm like, damn, this man is actually so serious about this thing. Yeah. I called you. I'm like, yo, bro, like, yo. Your little bro is like hectic about this thing. And he's like, yo, Joe, you're his DJ. Go on about it. Let's get it going. You know what's going on? And I'm like, okay, cool. I hate you. I'm like, yo, big bro. I know you're a busy man. You know, you are like, a you, you've made your name in the game. But please, bro, I need you for this record. And all. He's like, yo, bro, I get you what you're saying to me and all of that. Like he said, I sent him a different beat. He's like, yo, I get what you're saying to me. But I believe in the situation of where we're all locking and everything. Let's all lock in, let's make the session happen, you know? Yeah. I hit him up, I'm like, my bro, we gotta get the sessions going and all of that. This was Tito saying to me, he's like, yo, bro, make it happen. Let's get the guys going and all of that. That's how everything happens. That's literally how the first two songs came about. And we're like, oh, now we're in studio, we're getting two songs going, we're all locked in and everything is going on. And we're like, yo, man, we're on to something. You know what I'm saying? He's selecting the beats, he's making sure the right artists are on the songs. Like, yo, bro, let's make sure this thing happens. Once the first two songs came in, we were like, nah, we're on to something. We explained to him what the goal is, what we're trying to do, and what everything is like, yo, man. And I gotta say this, shout out to Big Bro Tito, man. Like, you don't meet a guys, like a lot of guys that are like him most of the times, but yo, shout out to you, Big Bro. I'm giving you my flowers right here on Slick On Live. This yeah. man wants me to be a star, bro. He's yeah. there for me, he's there for me. He tells me, like, yo, bro, I need you to be a star. You're a good person. You've got a good heart. You've got a great taste in music. That's how we're doing it. That's how we're moving on our end. And I won't lie, bro. This man played a huge role in my album. I won't lie. This man, like, every time I send him a beat, and I would say, yo, if you listen to the intro of the project, there's a point where I'm saying, yo, Jay, you hear that record that I sent you, the beat that I sent you, and I said, yo, I need you to be like to do like some luxury rap and I said yo fuck that I need you to tell some story about me because this guy has known me for some time so the intro was supposed to be the outro on the project let me wrap it up let me wrap it up the intro was supposed to be the outro but we were like yo nigga fuck that let's talk about the real shit that's going on in my life this man knows everything about me you know what's going on if you listen to the intro like attentively this man is literally telling my life story, basically, from first way to the last way. Yeah. Why is it called viral? I'll tell you this, bro. Yeah. I've always been about a guy who's like viral. Yeah. Like, viral is the word I've always used at all the time. Yeah. I said, yo, I'm viral all the time. Yeah. And this, it's crazy because he's the guy who was like, yo, nigga, you keep saying you viral and all that shit, yeah. but you tell that shit to us. Yeah. Nobody knows that about you. You yeah. say you viral, but no one knows that. Yeah. Why don't you say you viral? And I'm like, ah, people might think I'm cocky. I'm giving you the exclusives now. He took my phone. He was like, yo, nigga, you saying you viral, right? Let's see how viral you are. You went on my Twitter and said, yo, I'm the most viral DJ out there. That's he. And I'm thinking, oh. I'm like, that came from him. For real, bro. That yeah, came from him because yeah. I kept saying I'm viral. And he was like, yo, nigga, you're too shy for this shit. You keep saying this shit to us. Nobody knows that about you. No, nigga, say that. He took my phone and tweeted that. The whole night we go to the next one. I'm like, yo, bro. People are like, they're busy frying me. He's like, nah, don't worry. It was, it, was, it was already there. It just had to come out. You know what I mean? It, it was already there. It was just it was just somebody to say and, 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 and validate the confidence and say, hey, man. If we're saying this behind the scenes, maybe it might work out there in the workplace. Broadcast live.